Zareth? Praise Elath, you're safe! I was... so worried about you. In 2002, Arcane Studios unleashed a little game called Arx Fatalis, inspired by past efforts like Ultima Underworld and Thief. The end result? Pure greatness in the looking glass tradition. A true, bona fide, and quite overlooked classic. In 2006, Arcane released Dark Messiah of Might and Magic for the PC, a spin-off to the popular role-playing and turn-based strategy series that was nonetheless a departure due to its first-person, action-oriented gameplay. Think of it as an FPS, or first-person slasher. Now, the year is 2008, and Dark Messiah has arrived on Xbox 360 with the added moniker Elements. This new game isn't vastly different from its PC counterpart, but according to the gaming press, this one sucks ass. That's right, aside from Game Informer's score, 8 out of 10, everybody else in town would have you believe this one licks Oblivion's left nut and recoils at the taste like a half-assed porn star. My own personal opinion? Eh, wrong. Granted, the game's linear. Think Oblivion on a scripted path. And it's got a few bugs and here and there an annoying tendency to leave you scratching your head in confusion over exactly what you're supposed to be doing despite the aforementioned linearity. Add to that some dated graphics and repetitive enemies, and this must suck, right? Nope. Despite an identity crisis that puts this somewhere between a role-playing game and a first-person shooter, Elements is, in fact, an atmospheric, exciting, and replayable adventure romp that may not live up to Arx Fatalis standards, but certainly deserves more credit than, say, GameSpot's dismissive and worrying score of 3.5 out of 10. Note to reviewer Brett Todd, if you don't like games and yet you review them for a living, get a real fucking job. Elements cast you as Sarah, the mysterious and unenthusiastically voiced wizard's apprentice, who may specialize in one of four classes. The selection of these highly specialized classes vastly affects the way the game is played, and should add ample incentive for hardcore types to revisit the material again and again. That, coupled with the fact that this game should take you well over 10 hours to finish the first time around, is enough reason to warrant a purchase if you're a fantasy aficionado. The game's biggest flaw may well be its identity crisis. In fact, this is, for the most part, an action game with limited RPG elements. Think Raven's Hexen with added depth. Or perhaps 3D Realm's all but forgotten Witchhaven, a first person action romp that relied primarily on melee attacks instead of Doom style firearms. You don't get to customize your skills or advancements, but you do advance as you slay your opponents and progress through the single player campaign, even if these advancements are a little on the counterfeit side. And speaking of the combat, it all but rewards your deviousness, creeping up on unsuspecting enemies and kicking them off ledges or into spiked walls is just too damn fun. Going hand-to-hand -hand is also pretty cool. You can parry the attacks of your foes and save up for some nice finishers, particularly when you build up enough adrenaline. Taking a nod from the Thief series, all character types will need to master the rope arrow if they are to succeed. This item factors into some environmental puzzles and sometimes even provides a quick escape to higher ground. This is the Source Engine still doing its thing, and it nails atmosphere more often than not, from dark brooding crypts to cliffside orc cities. That said, graphics aren't a high point here. Character models seem basic, and there's a certain lack of detail to some of the textures. The audio is pretty solid, though, minus some weak voice work and a few music tracks. For example, holy shit, does the loading screen music get annoying after a while. Anyway, an otherwise enjoyable gaming experience also suffers from some glitching that can't be ignored. Several times I found myself stuck on the environment, unable to move or do anything save reload my last game. Likewise, I also experienced a problem with the sound during one level where all audio ceased completely until I reloaded a few times. Enemy encounters grow stale from time to time as well, since you find yourself squaring off with the same foes a little too often for my taste. Boss battles help liven things up a bit, however. Yes, and there really are some nice set pieces in this game. In closing, 
Dark Messiah of Might and Magic Elements does not suck. Your ability to enjoy this game relies on your ability to accept it for what it is. It's not quite an FPS, not quite an RPG, but somewhere in the middle. Sure, there are a few glitches here and there and some boneheaded design choices that may leave you confounded, and it's got nothing on Arcane's previous effort. But if you're a fantasy fan who loves first-person hack and slash, pass this one up and you'll regret it. Sarath, we need to find a way inside. 